I'm kind of setting up right now trying to find a location that's usually really good. There's a hole out here about 30 feet deep. It comes off from 15 feet around just drops right off. Usually there's a lot of catfish and a lot of stripers that hold up in this hole. And matter of fact, I'm seeing some right now. I'm just now in 28 feet coming on to a massive amount of fish down here. So that's a good sign. Shows me the fish, shows me exactly where the fish are. I haven't really seen any fish consistently until I got into the 30 to 25 foot mark area. And, um, you know, we're going to throw some uh, shad out here, maybe some jigs, and uh, troll around a little bit and drift a little bit and see if we can't get on some of these uh, stripers and some of these catfish. So, now what I'm seeing right here, as you can see, I'm in 29 feet of water. And I'm going over, marking a bunch of fish. Looks like there's some bait right there with some bigger fish suspended in them. I turned around. I want to come back here and show you this area. We're coming into it now that has a whole bunch of bait. All these small spots right here, that's bait. And if you look inside this bait line, you're going to see we're going to be marking. Now, there's a big catfish or a big striper right there. We need to catch him. But what I was trying to say is if you look right here on this bait line, dropping off to 38 feet, you'll find a lot of fish that are in this bait. Hopefully what that tells me is that these fish are feeding on that bait fish, on them bait fish. Presumably they're shad. Uh, there's just an awful uh, a large amount of them down there, so it's probably a large school of shad, but hopefully these fish are active on these bait. We're gonna get it set up here the way the wind's blowing, so we'll drift right into them. Maybe we'll catch a few. I've got me some shad. Now these shad I caught about two to three weeks ago. And when I freeze my shad, if you're going to freeze up shad, take these and put a little bit of salt in your um, your your bag when you uh, freeze them up, and that'll help preserve them a lot better. Now what I want to do is when I get one of my rods here, we're using what we call a basic sand tea ray, and I'm going to just take and thread this shad right on through. So I'm gonna come, what I'm going to do is come through his eyeballs first. Then I'm going to pull the hook out. Then I'm going to come back right behind his dorsal fin and go right back in with the hook and then pull it snug. And then that fish is going to travel through the water like that. It's going to spin a little bit. That's going to help attract the fish. Let's get one out of here and see if we can't get a fish on. It's pretty windy out here today, but that's all right. We're out here drift fishing. One thing for sure about drift fishing you want, and that's a lot of wind. So, you know, if you've got drift socks out, that's what we're using. And, you know, you're, you're doing a drift fishing technique. Uh, what you need is you need drift socks first of all, and you need a good trolling motor. Because on real windy days, you need to control your speed. I like to stay somewhere about four tenths of a mile an hour when I'm drift fishing. Just keep them rods working off the bottom. All right, we have a rod set up. Now when I'm drift fishing, depending on the speed I'm traveling, I use anywhere between an ounce and two ounce weight. I want to keep my bait on contact with the bottom. I like to watch my line and you know this lake here, we don't really have any really good wave action, but in most cases on a, cases on a big lake, Lake Norman, uh, Santee Cooper, places like that, Lake Murray, I like to let my line touch the third wave. Because when you get into 30 feet of water, you want to make sure that that bait is right on the bottom. Because if it's not in contact with the bottom, where I'm seeing these fish on the depth finder right now, you're not going to be where the fish are. You're not going to be catching fish. You don't want to be dragging these lines halfway to the water column where the fish really where they're not staging at. So you need to watch your depth finder, see where the fish are at, okay? And when you find out where the fish are, are staying at, then go ahead and adjust your rods accordingly. You can see all the bait we're going over. If you look right down here, there's where the fish are. There's some stripers and some catfish. But we're going over a massive amount of bait right here. And that's what we're looking for. If we can stay in the bait, we're probably going to stay in the fish. Well, Debbie's got a pretty good catfish on here or something. We don't know what it is, but we're going to show you in just a minute if she can keep it out of the drift sock. Come on. Coming up. Reel down, reel down quick when you reel down. Pump him up. Easy now, don't overstress him. Reel down quick, reel down quick. 
Pump him up, easy, and reel down quick. Coming up. Ah, not bad. Come on, get him up here one more time. One more time. Get you a nice Arkansas blue. There we go. Boy, he didn't feel that big. Yeah. You didn't feel that big? No. Well, you were having an awful time reeling him in. Huh. All right. He hammered that thing when he hit it too, didn't he? Yeah. He didn't feel that big to me. Let me have uh Fire. there we go. No, I got him. Come right out. Just set that rod aside a little bit right there. Well folks, when you have when you have you some good fresh bait there, let me put this net up out of the way. Whoops, get that hook out of there. And uh that's one one technique that works real good for me. We fish like this down the Santee a lot. I mean, that's not no monster catfish, but it's an Arkansas blue. It, I don't know. I think now I was going to tell you what. I think that's a channel cat, to be honest with you. That's what it's not a hybrid. It's just a channel. It's a regular, regular old river channel cat, but it's a nice fish. Just the right eating size. All right, well, we'll throw back out and see if we can't catch another one, okay? Yep. Oh, he got my fingers in. All right. He got my finger. There you go. All right, hold him up there. There you go. Now if you're blocking your face. <laughs> okay. Hands all good. Just set it down. I'll look around. Let me show you what we're using really quick here, folks. What they call the basic sand tea rig. And what you have is you have an ounce to two ounce sinker attached to a swivel that comes down. And then you put you on, I like to use anywhere between three and four feet of leader line. Then it comes to a slip float, just like that right there. I run about 18 inches of line right to my hook. And I'm using a, a number four bait hook. And you can see how I have my shad on there. And what happens is that shad will go through the water and he'll spin like this. And that just helps attract the fish a little bit better. <laughs> 